All right, our next topic is going to be dysphagia, and this is going to be part one of two. We're going to start off with achalasia. Achalasia is going to be patients that present. It's going to be usually a young patient that presents with a dysphagia to both solids and liquids simultaneously. If they come in with a dysphagia to solids and liquids at the same time, the first test we're going to do is a barium study. A lot of students mix this up and think you have to do manometry first, but remember, it's an esophageal disorder, and remember what we said, for esophageal disorders, we want to do a barium first. And to, to definitively diagnose it or confirm it, we're going to do manometry. If a patient has certain risk factors, risk factors including age over 60, anemia, heme-positive stools, symptoms over six months duration, or weight loss, you're going to do an upper endoscopy. And why are we going to do an upper endoscopy in patients with these risk factors? Because we're going to be searching for a cancer. So if they have no risk factors, we do a barium. We're going to confirm it with a manometry. And our best initial therapy is going to be repeated pneumatic dilation. So if they say it was confirmed with a manometry and they tried pneumatic dilation and it failed, what are we going to do? We're going to repeat pneumatic dilation. Okay, so you're not going to go straight to the next step. We're going to do repeated pneumatic dilation. And if on repeat pneumatic dilation, um, it fails, not pneumatic dilation fails, we're going to try an injection of botulinum toxin. Botulinum toxin is also used in patients that refuse surgery. Um, and it's also used in patients that re uh, refuse pneumatic dilation. Those are two cases that we can also use botulinum toxin as well. And if this botulinum toxin injection in the lower esophageal sphincter fails, we're going to do esophageal myotomy. So achalasia, uh, dysphagia, solids and liquids simultaneously, start off with barium, confirm with manometry. If they have any of these risk factors, we're going to do an upper endoscopy. Our best initial therapy is repeated pneumatic dilation. And if that fails, we're going to do botulinum. If they're a poor surgical candidate or refuse pneumatic dilation or surgery, we're also going to do botulinum. And if that fails, we're going to do esophageal myotomy. Esophageal cancer. This is going to be dysphagia to solids and liquids also, but how are we going to distinguish this between achalasia other than the risk factors? It's going to start off with dysphagia to solids, and then it's going to progress to a dysphagia um, with liquids. And um, the patients, we're going to look for certain risk factors as well, such as heme-positive stool, um, patients over the age of 50. Uh, patients can sometimes present with anemia. And they may be alcoholics, smokers, just look for risk factors. Some of these risk factors like right here. And our initial test is going to be endoscopy and biopsy. And for staging, if it's positive for staging, what are we going to do? We're going to use endoscopic ultrasound. And to check the degree of local spread, we're going to do CT scan. And to check for asymptomatic spread to the bronchi, we're going to do bronchoscopy, okay? And the treatment is going to be surgical resection, and this is if there is no metastasis. If there is metastasis, we're going to do both chemo and radiation therapy, and the chemo we're going to use is 5-fluorouracil, and we're going to add radiation to that. So esophageal cancer, it's going to be first a dysphagia of solids that progresses to liquids, Initially, we're going to do endoscopy plus biopsy. To stage, we're going to do an endoscopic ultrasound. Very important, very bored, high yield. And to see the degree of local spread, we're going to do a CT scan. For asymptomatic spread to the bronchi, we're going to do bronchoscopy. We're going to treat it with surgical resection for localized. And for metastasis, we're going to do chemotherapy and radiation. And the chemo we're doing is 5-fluorouracil. Scleroderma is pretty easy because this is going to be pretty much the only one for your test that's going to present with dysphagia plus GI reflux symptoms. So if they come in with um, um, dysphagia plus GERD type symptoms, we're going to think scleroderma. And in scleroderma, what are we going to do? We are going to do an immobile open tube. And our most accurate test is going to be motility studies. And for scleroderma, it's not written here, but what are we going to treat these patients with? We're going to treat them with proton pump inhibitors. Um, our last topic is going to be diffuse esophageal spasm and nutcracker esophagus. Uh, esophagus sorry. 
and this is going to come the patient's going to come in with a severe but intermittent chest pain with dysphagia um, a lot of times these patients are going to have a lack of risk factors and a lack of things that point towards ischemic heart disease but it's going to look like an ischemic heart disease okay um, a, a common precipitant for diffuse esophageal uh, spasm, also known as cracker esophagus, is a patient gets these symptoms after drinking a cold beverage. So they're going to get dysphagia with intermittent severe chest pain with no risk factors. And oftentimes in the question, it's going to say it occurs after drinking a cold beverage. Our first test is going to be a barium, just like we said over here, because it's an esophageal disorder, and our most accurate is going to be manometry, and it's going to show high intensity disorganized contraction. Our therapy, which isn't written here, is going to be nifedipine, calcium channel blockers. Um, if calcium channel blockers you don't see um, in your choices, it can also be uh, nitrates can also be used. And how is this? What's similar? What pathophysiology is similar to this? And what pathophysiology do we use the same treatment for? Um, Prince metals angina. It also comes with intermittent chest pain, right? And what do we use for Prince metals angina? We also use calcium channel blockers, preferably nifedipine, as well as nitrates. Um, so this is our part one of dysphagia, and we're going to have part two of dysphagia following this.